and today we're going to be looking at lecture three on history about Catherine the Great. Now, uh, this video was sponsored by Brilliant. We'll let you know more at the end of the video. Anyways, let's begin. Catherine the Great was one of the greatest Russian emperors uh, who governed the land like uh, truly like no one else could. Uh, and a lot of sources say this as well. So, uh, sorry cameraman. Hey, uh, thank you uh, Alex Rodriguez and Albert. Uh, now, today, we're going to be looking at Catherine the Great. Uh, we're going to start with her early life. Now, in her early life, she wasn't quite called Catherine. She was actually called Sophie for the um, uh, bigger portion of her life, the better portion. So, Catherine was now called Sophie, and we will refer to, uh, to her that way uh, until uh, further notice by the Russian queen, uh, Russian Tsarina Elizabeth. And so we're going to be referring to her as Sophie until she officially got the name Ekaterina, or as we know, Catherine, from the uh, Russian Tsar. Serena, I mean, for Elizabeth. Catherine's early life, uh, uh, she was neglected uh, or yelled at because her wife, I mean her mother, Johanna Elizabeth, was w one of the m many one of the many people in the house of Holstein, I, uh, Holstein God or something. So he, she was ambitious and she wanted to escape her husband's military post. Her husband had a very, uh, was one of the many, many princes, while well, he was not a peasant, he was one of the many, many princes uh, of a tiny, tiny uh, portion of the Holy Roman Empire. Hmm. So uh, you can tell that this was particularly not in Johanny's interest. And she wanted to escape uh, her husband's grand military post and more importantly, her husband altogether. So, she thought that a male heir would be the way to go doing this. And so, uh, Sophia's official crime was being a girl. So, uh, she was taught lessons uh, by uh, people. Uh, but she uh, uh, frequently asked uh, annoying questions. She, well, was bright and could memorize things with ease, but she was fr uh, frequently asked really weird questions that infuriated her teachers. Hmm. She only found a little bit of solace in one of her teachers who taught her friends and brought her books. Hmm. Now, uh, Sophia, okay, so Sophia had a lot of brothers, but a lot of them died in childbirth, and another one died of scarlet fever. More specifically, uh, she had four, three brothers and one sister. Uh, one of his brothers, uh, one of her brothers died uh, in infancy, Another one, when, uh, who uh, jo Johanna focused on, see, uh, he died of scarlet fever at the age of 12, and an another one just went off to Russia. And one of her sisters died in childbirth as well. So, she only uh, had one uh, surviving brother who was a half decade younger than her, and as he even went to Prussia and became ruler there. So that's not important for now, since Catherine the Great was Tsarina or Empress of Russia. So now, uh, Sophia, after uh, her brother, I believe he was called William Frederick, died, uh, her mother's eye finally turned to her. But uh, she didn't really uh, get the warmth she hoped for. Instead, 
she uh, had to get married to uh, one of her unmarried relatives. And there was a lot of them. So she checked every single, um, every single relative until she found Peter Ulrich, who was the nephew of uh, Tsar, uh, Tsarina Elizabeth, uh, Elizabeth, just Elizabeth. Uh, there's no uh, known surname, and yeah, so there's no number either. So her official name is just going to be Elizabeth. Anyways, now, Peter Ulrich was a very, very weird guy. At 11, he uh, already started drinking, and not only that, he was fond of alcohol. Uh, if you don't know, that's banned here in uh, Islam, so uh, this is really surprising. How do you drink at 11 when the law at least says you have to be 16 now? I guess things were different back then. Anyways, now uh, he also kept playing with toy soldiers. Already uh, uh, in a few weeks, she found him detestable, and in later writings, Catherine said that she sat on the opposite side of the castle of uh, Peter. So, and Peter was clearly detestable, but she was forced by Sarina of Russia, uh, Elizabeth, to marry Catherine for a tiny bit of her life. So, uh, how did this happen? Well, and well, a dinner one night, and a dinner one night, they received a letter to uh, go to Berlin uh, from Frederick the Great. It was so Frederick the Great was ruler of Prussia at the time. And so, and he invited the family to go to Berlin. Then another letter came that same night, asking to go to. Uh, Russia from you know who Elizabeth. So they fr uh, the letter from Elizabeth also had a noble grant of ten thousand rubles to pa prepare for the trip. And they started packing for Berlin, and Russia wanted flight support of Russia in case things uh, broke out in war, which they did a few centuries later. But that's not important, since we already talked about that. So, anyways, I believe. So, anyways, there, uh, Prussia, uh, they started going to Prussia uh, while incognito. And uh, when they finally uh, arrived, uh, arrived, Johanna kept uh, Catherine or Sophia away, <coughs> away, because how could Frederick possibly want to see uh, her daughter more than her uh, uh, beautiful face? But last, the first question that Frederick asked was the whereabouts of Ka uh, Elizabeth's daughter or Johanna's daughter. So, uh, I don't want to confuse Johanna with uh, Elizabeth the Tsar, Tsarina. So I'm just going to use Johanna for the rest of the time. So Johanna, since Catherine, uh, Catherine or Sophia wasn't ready, she said Catherine or Sophia, uh, I'll just use Sophia, was sick. Second day, same thing, same excuse. Third day, uh, same thing. And then the excuse was she had no dress. So, Frederick the Great asked to lend the girl a dress. Finally, uh, she appeared uh, like in a sigh uh, <clears throat> blob of herself. How could this king possibly like this uh, drab little 13, 14 teenager? So, however... This girl was actually seated at the table uh, at the t right next to the king uh, when they were at dinner. Her mother wasn't even at the same table. Uh, this woman took Johanna back, obviously. But, anyways, 
uh, under this layer of hum uh, humility, uh, he saw interest in this uh, little Sophia girl. So he uh, called up Russia and said that she was the one. So uh, when they traveled to Russia, also incognito, uh, they f uh, saw Sarina uh, Elizabeth in all, its, uh, all her greatness. Uh, at first, uh, they also met Peter Ulrich. Uh, who was still sort of happy to see her, but also um, still got wrecked with alcohol. So, yeah. Anyways, he was still very childish. And even though he'd moved on from the toy soldiers thing, he'd uh, <coughs> make his servants dress up as soldiers and march around the room. You can imagine this. Uh, he was pretty childish or dumb at that time. So... Uh, even when he, he was forced to not do his, uh, those practices, he was still childish uh, and really didn't l like to do anything. He, he didn't even like Russia and said that he hated Russia, he hated Orthodox Christianity, and that he would uh, actually uh, in love with another woman and was forced to marry Catherine uh, or Sophia. Uh, I broke my promise. She was f forced to marry Sophia because uh, her aunt, his aunt said so. So, uh, this was, this was moderate to say the least. Uh, and then, he was still childish. How many times did I mention that word? Because when they went to sleep after that, after the wedding they had, uh, where Catherine was decked in jewels and fine uh, wedding dresses, uh, he Peter came in reeking of alcohol after Sophia waited for two hours. So, uh, by this time, Elizabeth actually gave her the name Ekaterina, or Catherine as we know today. today. So, now, uh, we can imagine, uh, you can imagine the, how humiliated Catherine was when she heard uh, Peter asking his maid to move dolls around the bed. Yeah, this is weird, isn't it? This is not false information. Getting this information straight from confirmed sources. Anyways. Uh, okay. Anyways, now, this is going to be the end for part one. And uh, tomorrow, we're, uh, we're going to put a list of what things we're going to talk about. We're going to put how um, Peter was in the line of the throne to Tsar, uh, how he was overthrown by the people for being too childish and enforcing bad rules. He enforced some uh, good uh, needed rules, but uh, entirely disregarded his official uh, title of Tsar and uh, turned all his might against Denmark, so he uh, got, got his old title back. Mm tiny old tiger back and then we're going to be talking about mm, uh, her reign uh Catherine reign as empress after uh peter was overthrown and how Catherine's son uh, grew up to be an emperor and then was assassinated five years later so that's all we're going to talk about today. Thank you everybody for watching the third episode of history and bye bye.